Hear this, no matter what you accumulate in the wrong direction, it cannot be equal to success. Until you are running your race and winning your race, you cannot be said to be successful. So success is about finding your lane and running your race. Finding your lane and running your race. Finding your lane and running your race. I've shared this before some time ago when in school we were running, you know, 200 meters race. And the way the track was, instead of people to be outside the track, people were inside. You know, inside the circle of the track. And while we were running that race, I saw people running after us, cheering us, shouting. And they were running, some of them were faster than us. Cheering us who were running the race. And we are running that race with everything within us. And I saw some of the people cheering, running faster than us, arriving at where we were going before us. But you know what? It was not their race, so no prize. There are many people who are running, but it's not their race. And because of that, no prize. Nothing to show. Effort is being given, but output is not being seen. Because they are not running their race. But I pray that in this month, for those who may have missed their track, by this encounter in this month, I see your steps being reordered in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. The only way not to waste life is to find purpose. The only way not to waste life is to find purpose and i know that for each one that is yet to have located the plan and agenda of god for his or her life this month the spirit of god will reveal it unto you in habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 the bible says there i will stand upon my watch i will sit upon the tower i will see what it will say unto me and what i will answer when i'm reproved he said then he shall say write the vision make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. What does that mean? It means if anyone can discover the plan and the purpose of God, and wrong with that plan and purpose, it is a matter of time his destiny will shine. It's just a matter of time his or her destiny will begin to shine. That is going to be somebody's experience here. There are people who may have been written off by others. People see you like nothing can come out of you. You know they said concerning Jesus, what can come out of Nazareth? Is there any good thing that can come out of there? It's impossible for anything of significance to come out. But the Bible tells us concerning Jesus, he returned in the power of the Spirit. And suddenly, his description changed. As he began to walk in preordained steps, we saw Jesus exalted to the point that he has a name that is above every other name. For somebody here, as you begin to walk in preordained steps, I see you enjoying divine exaltation. The heights that no one can imagine you attain, I see you exceeding it. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. So don't live life by guesswork. Continue to dive into the Spirit of God to assist you in the discovery of divine purpose. Don't live life by trial and error. There are too many people jumping from one place to the other in trying to enjoy breakthrough. Somebody changes from one career to the other and this career to the other. I remember some time ago, I came across somebody who had changed about five careers. Just moving from one to the other, one to the other. Because they say this one is popular now. This one is, there's money in this one now. So they jump to that one. Before they finish training for that one, there's money in another one. They jump to the other one. And you find out that as a result of that, life can become a bunch of confusion. But that will not be your portion again in Jesus' name. From this season onward, your life will be lived with precision. You believe it, say it louder, amen. I say, you believe it, say it louder, amen. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. You see, when you are driving in the night, your speed is at the mercy of light. If you don't, no matter how good the engine of a car is, 
if there is no light, if you don't have headlamp in the night, you'll be driving slowly. You'll be moving carefully. Is that true? Because there is no light. You know, even in your house, if light goes off, even though you know where everything is, you will still be moving with, with care. You take a step and you use your leg to check whether there's anything there. Even though you know there's no chair there, but something is telling you that something may have moved that chair. So you start checking. Is there anything here? When you put that leg, you take the next one. Anything here? And the journey to your kitchen that will take you less than 30 seconds. 30 minutes later, you are still doing like this. Because there is no light, so things are going slow. That's how destiny goes slow when there is no light. But the moment light comes, speed comes. For somebody from this season, I see speed coming your way. I said, I see speed coming your way. As light begins to strike by the Spirit of God, I see speed coming your way. You believe it, say it louder, amen. I say, you believe it, say it louder, amen. Our lives. There are many people today who are living their lives by trial and error. They are simply trying one thing and trying the other thing, moving by human ideas. And as a result of that, you see them continuously frustrated. And you find their destiny seeming to be caged in because they have not recognized that there is a plan from God for them and there is one that is ordained to guide them into that plan. I recall when in secondary school, how that when we were supposed to move from junior class to senior class, most people who selected their class selected it by association. They gathered together. What class are you going? This one says science. How about you? Social science. How about you? Arts. You go commercial. Then you gauge them. One, two, three, four. Science, social science, arts, commercial. You say the one in science, very brilliant. The one in social science, somehow brilliant. The one in, <laughs> the one in commercial, average. The one in arts, struggling. Where do I want to be? And then by reason of association, they enter into a class. Not minding the end. The thought is not about what the class will make them, but who they will meet in the class. And as a result of that, you find many destinies eroded. You find individuals changing career from one place to the other by association. My friend is a doctor. How will I look like if I now become an accountant? I will be a doctor. You find people jumping from place to place. I met somebody some time ago who has been in about five different careers. Why? They say this one is hot now. There's money there. So she jumps there. By the time she finishes, another person has a good idea of another place. She jumps there. And then jump and jump and jump and jump. No progress. Continuous stagnation because there is no direction. But I pray today that every siege of confusion be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every siege of confusion be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Believe it, say it louder.